Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Sweet Interviews. Today we have a guest who did something that no other guest has done so far, which is actually reach out to me. And she told me, hey, I've got internships since my freshman year every single summer. And I think it might be beneficial to your you know, audience to hear about it. She's also a, an EC major at Purdue, a senior right now, which is how we know each other kind of. But without like further ado, this is Rumita. Thank you so much for being here. And we're just gonna get started with you telling us a little bit more about yourself in terms of your background, where you're from, where you were born and raised, the school you went to, and you know all that kind of information. Go ahead. Okay, um, well, I was born here in the States, in Ohio actually, and I grew up in a very white neighborhood, mm. basically. Um, but it was very really interesting to grow up that way because like my parents were straight from India mm. and even like where they came from they came from a very rural area so like both of my parents lived in like the same really small town on the border of India and Bangladesh mm -hmm. and like when I went back this summer too I realized how different we are from our family really yeah just in terms of like you know like their way of life like their way of life is like you know like you just like basically eat sleep cook that kind of thing simple life yeah it's very simple and then i like think about it here it's like so much more complicated so like having those two very like conflicting things growing up with you kind of i think like shaped me into who i was because there was a lot of like who am i for a very mm. long time and I figuring see. out who i am took a while but it was very good because like now i know who i am and i'm very Perfect. confident in who i am Perfect. too so Okay, and then, so you went to high school in Ohio, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah. Okay, and I'm guessing, okay, so just usually we ask this question because some of our guests who studied abroad have different curriculums. So you had the U.S., obviously the United States curriculum, you did the SAT, yeah, um, the SAT, APs. AP How many classes. APs did you end up taking before coming here? I, n I took like six my senior year, I know oh, that, wow. and then I took like a few every other year, so I'm guessing around like... 10 Whoa. to 12. Okay. Please. Wow. Yeah. And would you say they helped you, like, either during the application or not at all? <laughs> no, I, like, didn't learn anything from my high school. Okay. Because, it like, it just wasn't that hard. Mm. So in terms of being ready for college, like, coming into Purdue, and I came in into honors at Purdue, too, mm. I just got, like, slapped my first semester. Wow. Okay. Yeah, like, I had no clue what was going on with school. Like, literally my first semester, I had a 2-7. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. But then after that, it was fine. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so, but would the, did the APOs help you kind of like skip certain classes or uh, give you credits for yeah, some classes? Yeah, like I got credit in like English and a couple of like gen eds, but like the important classes like CS, physics, I didn't get credit for. Okay. I got like all the math stuff out of the way. But other than that, like APOs help, but not so much just because like, you know, like in like ECE curriculum like there's no way you can get out of taking certain true, classes true. Like, you yeah, might be able like not have to take English or something but, but a core class that's yeah. really important okay so how would you say your your background whether it was you know like being born and raised in Ohio or whether it's the origins of your family how did that shape your decision one to come to Purdue and two to study electrical engineering so studying electrical engineering, that's actually a funny story. Okay, cause go for it. So <laughs> I like was obsessed with penguins when I was little. Ooh. So <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So when I was like six, um, global warming was basically like the hot topic mm, at that time, absolutely. right? And so I freaked out and I was like, all the penguins are gonna die, oh my <sighs> God. And so that kind of spurred like why I, like my focus was sustainability mm -hmm. now. So like from there I've like been like, I wanna save the planet. And kind of like throughout the years after when I like picked up different things. So like when I was like 12 or 13, I really started like in cars. So then I was like, how can I combine all my interests to like basically make it my life's work? That's mm. kind of what I thought. So like engineering was like obviously the choice if I was going to go into sustainability. So for a while I was really wanted to do mechanical engineering. Okay. And my dad was completely against that because really? he's CS and oh. IT. So he was like, why would you do mechanical? Like... He just didn't want me to do that for some reason. Okay. And I had an internship with P&G, and I did, like, a mechanical project, an electrical project. It wasn't, like, a real internship. It was just basically learning different mm -hmm. engineering And this things. was in high school? Yeah. Okay. Because growing up in Cincinnati, like, P&G was founded in Cincinnati, so I that see. was there. Um, but, yeah, like, the electrical projects I liked a lot more. And, like, I really enjoy math, and my, like, mind focuses and, like, basically works, like, very, like, math 
like mathy ish. Okay, yeah. So it kind of just like worked out. Like I really liked EE or whatever like project I did. And then also like the more I like read into how like what you actually do with electrical engineering, I realized it was super broad and kind of what I actually wanted to do. Okay. So like you know like like at the application of math there, and then also like with like AI ML being able to like actually optimize systems. Like, I realized you could do all of that with EE. So that's why I chose it. Wow. Okay. So you had, like, a pretty solid idea of what you wanted to do before yeah. coming to college. <laughs> it uh -huh. wasn't one of those decisions where you come here and you're just trying to figure everything out, including no. your major. I, like, okay. knew what I wanted to do. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. And so, kind of, like, on a side tangent, you know, as a student at Purdue, what kind of activities or extracurriculars do you do that, like, keeps you on top of your game? Um. So as a senior, you kind of, <laughs> yeah, you've been through a lot. So like what keeps you alive? Uh, so I actually like tried doing a lot, but okay. I really wasn't able to. Like freshman year, I was like kind of involved in Taekwondo because I did Taekwondo in high school. Okay. And nice. like I really enjoyed it, but like I realized I didn't really have time for yeah. that. So like every single time I'd start something, it was really sad because I just like end up having to like quit kind of mid through mm. just because of like commitments. And then um, so instead like freshman year, I ended up joining like the ROV team for a bit. Um, so wait, sorry, what does the ROV stand for? ROV, what? Or like, like, what was it? What was that team? Because I, I just it's like in um, IEEE, but it's like the underwater robotics team. Oh, basically. okay. Yeah, okay. so I was in that for some time, and then I also like dropped that because I wasn't interested in it. Yeah, and then sophomore year, I got involved into research, which was good, and then also I was on the urban dance team. But then junior year, like, that's when, like, school really got hard. Mm. So, like, everything that I did basically, like, extracurricularly, like, didn't happen. Okay. Which was really, like, sad because I was involved in a lot of things before. But, like, school just ended up taking up all my time. Mm. And that kind of, like, ended up, like, destroying me mentally, too. It was very wow. personal in a way. Okay. But I was just, like, since sophomore year, like, I've gone to CAPS, like, every semester. And that's helped me a lot. Wow. So CAPS is the center for... Oh, um, like the mental... Mm, okay, so it's just like thing. a support for people mm -hmm. like for people who think they're going through something like just yeah. like mentally stressful. Basically, because it's like they provide, like every single Purdue student has, you know, like you have 12 free therapy mm. sessions. So I'm wow, like, okay. if I have this, I might as well go. Take advantage of it. Yeah, and so like I went every semester. I go like, I still go because like recently like a lot of things happened. Like my, mm. like my first friend ever committed suicide like Ooh. this semester. So I'm like life just that. like is rough and so like I always have something that like is some type of support for me mm. so going to CAPS has like really helped me like from like a student perspective as well, as well. cuz like whenever I'm like I don't feel like you know like I don't want to do school which I like mm. feel a lot Absolutely. I like can always like talk to this person and, like Super. get help okay basically like what's like actually going on with me like why do I not want to do school you know yeah cuz once you figure out like why <coughs> <laughs> some things are happening you can like you can manage it you know you it's all like problem it. solving okay so. so just one thing I want to say is a lot of people when they go through something especially as like uh, devastating as losing a friend or a family member things like that they usually think you know it's their struggle alone and they, they hesitate to open up and share their experiences or or ask for help and what I think you know something that she did really well was the fact that she noticed like hey I might as well just go and talk to someone about this because there's no nothing wrong first of all and there's no shame in reaching out if you're struggling especially if it's something I mean in this case you realize this might jeopardize my future in my career and I don't think anyone I mean yes we're all emotional human beings and it's natural to feel down that way but in the long term we got to think about like okay how do I move on and how do I you know keep making progress in my life yeah. So I, I, I honestly respect the fact that you actually went out of your way and, and took advantage of some of the resources. And, and this is another thing, like make sure you explore everything around you. Like I didn't know right now, I'm about to graduate, and I didn't know we had like 12 free sessions yeah. of <laughs> consultation with these people. So make sure you don't make the same mistake as me and like explore all your, all your options. Now we're going to go into a little bit of your like work experience. So you've had an internship every single summer since freshman year at Purdue. And there are people you know, like myself, who up until their senior year, they're still trying to find that balance or like that secret way of getting that internship. So how did you get started? Like freshman year, you, like, did you know that, okay, I had to find an internship by summer? Or was it something you were like, I'm open, but I'm not really worried about it? I just like don't really worry about a lot of things like okay. that. I just like, I'm just like, you know, 
these things will happen, you know? True. So I just, like, kind of went, and I was like, and I was like, I wasn't expecting anything. Out of, As okay. a freshman, you know, okay. from, like, our first career fair, first semester, like, True. first three weeks into college. I wasn't yeah. expecting anything. And so then like you just walk up. I just kind of, like, you know, like, I showed up. I just talked. I said what I thought I should. And it just ended up working out. Like, it wasn't wow. something that, like... I tried really hard in and got stressed out over because mm. like something I've noticed for myself is like whenever I stressed out about something a lot, it tends to not work out for me because I just like get too much into my head about it and I overthink it and it's like ends up being like self-destructive in some Ooh. way. So I just like you know I like chill out and I'm like all right, what makes sense? What's the most logical True. way to go about this? So and you just, just take a that. step back and you're like okay, it's yeah, not as bad. Okay. Yeah, because like I don't know like talking to my mom too like my mom's a very wise woman. And so she always just, like, focuses on, like, being a good person and just, like, not really, like, stressing about things because, like, you know you'll, like, make the right moves. True. So you just have to, like, trust in yourself and just go for it. I That's see. kind of, like, what okay. I do. So freshman year, it's the fact that, you know, you weren't too stressed. You were like, if it happens, that's great. If it doesn't happen, I'm not going to be too sad mm -hmm. about it. And then you end up securing the internship through the advice. Okay, she gave some advice on the rapid fire questions, so make sure you watch that before continuing the rest of the interview. So you, you shared some advice on that. And that was the end of freshman year. So sophomore year now is a little bit different because mm -hmm. now you've had an internship secured. Yeah, there's a little more stress. So yeah. And now what was your mentality going into this like second, se second or yeah, sophomore year career fair? Um, so I had a return offer from Aptiv, okay. but I still like didn't want to work at Aptiv necessarily. Mm. You were open so to other options, basically. Mm -hmm. So I was like looking at other options, and for some reason, what I noticed was like there is like something that really matters, which is like how well you fit into mm. an organization, which I didn't realize before. So like <coughs> sophomore year, I was like looking at companies like GE, Siemens, you know, like traditional engineering companies, and whenever I'd interview there, like. They'd like me, but they wouldn't, like, like me enough oh, to wow. basically, like, offer me anything. And, like, that, like, really, like, hurt me for a while, I think, because I was, like, I was, like, what am I doing wrong? True. But then other companies that I talked to, like, I ended up interviewing with, like, Intel and SpaceX and some other, like, a few other companies. But, like, for Intel, I actually got an offer my so really? like, sophomore year, yeah. I just, like, didn't wow. take it because it was, like, I don't know, like, talking to my dad, he didn't want me to. He thought it would be smarter for me to like go back a second year at Aptiv. Okay. And like plus Intel, it was like far away and like he didn't want to let me go. And um, well, what else was it? It was also like a co-op. So like oh, having you'd to, have like, to miss take out off. On yeah. Okay. Like having to take off like a whole semester was kind of like and eh. Yeah. So I ended up not doing Intel. But like I really it's like for some reason like traditional engineering companies didn't really like me. But like mm. more like tech Silicon Valley-ish companies like me. So I'm just like, you know, that's just my fit. That's just what I'm going to go for. Okay. I mean, I guess an important thing to say here is that just because you don't get the job, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not good enough, right? You yeah. can You can pass all the interviews and you can do everything right. And it's just that recruiter, if he doesn't feel like, I don't know, maybe this person deserves to be in some other place, not mm -hmm. here. That I mean, that in a sense, that's like f doing you a favor, right? Yeah, because it's, like, it's not like you're like not smart or something, you know? And, like, people come to, like, Purdue for a reason. Because exactly. you know that there's good engineering students here. But a lot of times it's just, like, you're not you're not just an engineering student. You know, you're a person, too. True. And, like, can you as a person fit into this organization? That's a big part <laughs> of it. I'm so yeah. out of breath. That's so, like, right. that part's also important. And you have to realize that it doesn't say anything about you. It's just, like, how it is. And it's kind of, like, you have to find where you fit the best, too. You have to figure out, sense. like, working out, like, or working in like an environment what type of environment do you actually want to work in that's a, that's a big so factor as well because yeah it's i mean the job is one thing but like waking up every day and going to that place mm -hmm. you have to be excited for it and like wanting to be yeah. there and also like you know like say you don't like the recruiter but mm. you want to work for the company but the recruiter represents that company so True. do you actually want to work there that's a big question and so like that's like another thing because you have to work around those people every day okay so so y when you worked at Aptiv for the second time, was there anything different or was it kind of like the first internship a little bit more advanced, like a little bit added um, to it? The first internship was like really good. Really? Uh-huh. Like my team was very caring. My supervisor, he loved me so much and so did my mentor. Like they nice. always just wanted me to learn more and more and more about EE. 
Okay. So like he like collected a bunch of documents, a bunch of videos about every single topic in EE basically. <sighs> so like I learned so much that year. Really? Like I learned about like four year transforms my freshman year. Wow. And That's like I didn't even touch four year until like way later, you know? True. So like and like resonance, he told like taught me about like how an L C D display works. Really? So like he just was really passionate about me learning and like and my helping. growth. Okay. Yeah. So he he was really good. And then my second like summer there wasn't like as good as that. I think that's like my best internship. Really, the freshman mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So that's amazing because I know a lot of people are discouraged by saying, "Hey, as a freshman, like, what value can I get out of it, or what value can I add to it?" And then like examples like this are like, it could potentially be your yeah. one of your best work experiences. Because it's like, if anything, it's better that you don't know anything because that mm-hmm. means you're just a blank slate and all you can do is like put stuff onto absorb it absorb information nice. yeah so that's what i did <laughs> okay so what about the the second internship though or was it you would you say it was like less of learning and more of applying now that you've had because the second internship was at the end of your sophomore year mm-hmm. so you've learned a lot more yeah, information so now. Like i learned a lot of stuff so that's it was more application mm. but they just like they the team was a lot more um they just had a lot more projects going on so i don't think they had as much time to like focus on like my development That's as an intern as well. So that was like, I think that was a part of why I probably didn't enjoy the second internship as much. Because okay. the first one was, you know, like, they were just a lot more focused on me. I and see. like, there was like a couple major projects going on. But like, on this team, it was like the advanced development radar mm. group. So they just like always had projects. Like I see. Each person on the team handled their own project. Wow. It wasn't like one team working on it. Together. Team. Yeah. And, and feeling valued or like f- you know when when she says I, I like i like the attention of an intern at the beginning you can ask other people who've worked at companies and like i've known people and i've even had a little bit of experience with this where a lot of the time you go to a company and you just sit and do nothing and it's really not that fun because you're like what am i doing here mm-hmm. and Being paid to do nothing yeah that and, feels bad and too. yeah i mean internships where you don't get paid and you do nothing it's just like it's basically just sucking your soul out of your body. Yeah. So definitely, I think feeling valued or feeling like other people will care about you, like your mentors or supervisors, I think that's a big, big mm-hmm. thing. Value, I think, is like the most important thing, you know, because it's like money will come. True. But it's a matter of like, do you feel fulfilled? Do you feel valued? In the job. Yeah, because it's like, you know, you put so much effort into learning something. But if you don't even get to like apply that or do what you want, like, what's the point? What's the point? True. Yeah, absolutely. And then the money will follow, right? Because yeah. if you do it well enough for a couple of years or like enough time, you'll just be like specialized and you the know the money whole will come. Like either way you're gonna you're either gonna become specialized or you're gonna you're gonna like climb some ladder. Mm. Okay. So either way the money will come. You just have to like to make sure not you focus it. on the money, you know. I see. Because I feel like when you like focus on the money and you try and follow that, like you're not following anything valuable. So that True. kind of ends up like falling through and then you're like, Oh, this isn't working out the way I want. Like, maybe it will, but I think, like, investing more in value than money will get you further. Okay. I I, I honestly agree. I think it makes perfect sense. So now you're in your junior year. Senior year. Sorry? Oh, wait. Like, like, yeah, we're going down that timeline. (laughs) Yeah. So you're in your junior year, and you've had two internships with Aptiv. Mm -hmm. At this point, like, you just finished your summer. Are you thinking, I want to go back to Aptiv, or are you like, I really think it's time for me to change? Um, What's the thought process that's going on? Well, I really enjoyed working at Aptiv. Okay. But I wanted to try something new. Something different. I wanted to just explore, you know, because it was also like both of my internships were in the Midwest, so I kind of wanted to see like different coasts, what's going on. Yeah. And I really wanted to like work in California because I was like the beaches, the nature. That's the dream. Yeah. Yeah. So like that's kind of like why I went after Lyft because like I knew exactly where they were. Mm. I knew what they did. I knew that, like, my experience would be valuable because, like, Lyft and Aptiv also partnered. Oh, So, like, okay. my, like, choosing Lyft wasn't, like, some, like, oh, I'm just going to, like, it, it wasn't was on a whim. Yeah, yeah, It was very strategic. That's hard, that's <laughs> So, yeah, because, yeah, like, Lyft and Aptiv were partnered. They were in Vegas. So, like, I definitely, like, used that. I was like, I know, like, you guys are partners. Okay. So, like, in, like, my message and everything, like, I put all those points. Nice. To, like, make sure, like, I was feeling what they actually needed. Because mm. it's, like, I also, like, Message Uber and Tesla, and they're interested as well. But like, I saw who was most interested in me, and that's kind of also what I went for, you know. Absolutely. And if you're not, if you're not sure what she's referring to, um, basically she used LinkedIn as a tool, mm-hmm. and you know, she, 
again, she mentioned something that honestly blew me away. It's like, guys, there's really no shame in just messaging a recruiter for a company you really want to work for. And in this case, like, you were fine with Uber or like Tesla, but you really thought Lyft had the thing that you wanted. Mm -hmm. and, and like, you know, Lyft's like brand image is so good. So like, I fell in that. I was like, yeah, nice. like I want to work at Lyft. Nice. And honestly, it was very enjoyable. Like the people there are really nice. They're nice. really good. And like their office and everything, it was just so, it was just, you know, really? like a really So in terms of like a lifestyle, was it what you expected yeah, out of like a California? Yeah, lifestyle hundred percent wow. like I had so much time like I went on so many trips That's just because nice. it wasn't like I always like had a lot of work to do over the weekend or something mm. like at Aptiv like when I'd be working there I'd be like there for like 12 hours a day sometimes wow. as an intern huh. and like the like the actual full-time employees would be there like even later than I was so it was a lot of That's work crazy. but it lived like there were people who would leave at like three and like really? I would leave at like five or six like seven or eight at the latest so wow it was definitely like, like the work lifestyle was very different. Okay, so like it is kind of like a balanced lifestyle where mm -hmm. you sometimes have to work, you know, a little bit over what you're supposed yeah. to, which is fine. That's everywhere, but you kind of make up for it. Where other days where you're not, there's no work. You can just leave, mm -hmm. or you know, since you already worked a lot before, you can just kind of make up for it today, and just like go home early. Okay, that's that's pretty good. And now as a senior, and you've had all these experiences. What, what's your kind of thought process of looking for a full-time job? What are you looking for? Or like what are at least, okay, what are some of your criteria? So you said you wanted to move out of the Midwest for your third internship. Mm -hmm. Is that something you, you're looking for in your full-time, like yeah, away from the Midwest? Yeah, I don't want to be in the Midwest. Okay. I've, like, I've grown up here. I went to school here. I think I spent enough time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like definitely like looking for like more like coastal, like West Coast, East Coast, doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what I like learned from working at Lyft too was that I actually want to work for like an even smaller company. Ooh, really? Yeah. Like even though it was like like Lyft level five, like self driving division, that was only like two hundred, three hundred employees. But even that, like even though like I knew everyone or knew of everyone, I still like want to go smaller. Wow. Because like the smaller company you work at, the bigger of an impact you, you have. You can make. Mm -hmm. So like one of the companies I'm looking at right now, it's actually like. It was just a Google X project, but it graduated, oh, become okay. a company. It's called Makani Power. Okay. And like they're doing like some really cool stuff. Like basically they have a wind turbine that's powered with a plane slash kite thing. Really? Yeah. And it's huh. just like so innovative and it's so cool. And like that's like the type of project that I want to work on. And it's a really okay. small team. Wow. So have you like messaged these people on LinkedIn? Or not like yet. <laughs> okay. You're just yeah. exploring. Just mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Cause I'm not sure yet because like. I don't know. Like, I know, like, there's a lot of stability in working for a big company, mm. and I don't know if that's, like, the smart thing to do coming out as a new grad. Like, you know, like, making sure I actually have a job by the time I graduate. Like, if I sign something early. True. So, not entirely, like, sure yet what I'm going to do, but I'm going to, like, I normally figure this out on breaks. Because also, like, looking at, like, 2020, like, you have to realize that, like, a lot of companies aren't really focused on hiring new grads right now True. they might hire like interns because like they always need that but like in terms of like having a head count they don't know that until 2020 mm -hmm. so like that's like f like every single time that i've gotten um a job basically outside of like my first internship has been around like that break time really mm -hmm. and when you're referring to break is that like the the kind of like, like december break, break or yeah okay because like right after 2020 is when every single company knows what they're actually going to do but before that, like, you can hire, or, like, not hire, like, you can apply, but, like, most people don't really get something, because most companies just don't know they're what they're They're not sure do. yet, like, yeah, do we need yeah. these people or that? And, okay. like, a lot of companies, too, like, like, Boeing, for example, like, their, you know, their airline just went down, so they don't know how many people they're going to yeah. hire after that. True. And I feel like a lot of companies are, like, feeling the same thing right now. Okay. So. I think that's actually valuable insight, because... When, when people start like not hearing back from companies, I'm not talking about rejections, I'm talking about not hearing back. That could be like a message that, hey, we think you're might, you might be a fit. We're just deciding on you know, whether we have an opening or not. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't reflect again on you or your abilities or your qualifications. Yeah. That's really interesting. So now that you have had all these work experiences, how would you say working as an intern, as a hardware engineering intern is different from a software engineering intern? Since you've done a little bit of both. Yeah. So what, what would you say the main differences are or like, I don't want to say pros and cons, but what, what has interested you in both fields? Um, so like I chose electrical engineering so that I could do both hardware and software. So okay. I can know what's going on in both so that I know the whole f full picture, mm -hmm. right? 
So for hardware, I'd say there was just like so many more things that can go wrong with hardware. Really? Like, yeah, overall, just like, because there's so many different types of testing too. Mm. And um, whenever you're working on a product and you're looking like after integration, so once like the software is actually on the product itself, there's like, whenever something goes wrong, it's like, what has gone wrong? Mm. You have no clue. Wow. And so like going in and trying to figure out, is it a software issue or is it a hardware issue? Is like one challenge on its own. Yeah, true. And then when it's, once, it's an har- once, uh, once it's a hardware issue. That's a different story. It's a different story, yeah. Cause it's like, all right, you figure out what went wrong, right? And then after that, it's like, once you've made this hardware change, how is it gonna impact everything else? True. And like, if you put it in any other type of testing situation, how is it going to react? Because it's like you may have found a solution for it to work in one situation, what but about what about others? every other one? So like hardware is just like so difficult. Like any single time, like like for 362, like our microcontroller um, class, class, like I was doing the wiring for it, right? Mm. And so every single time there is an issue, I'm just like out here with my oscilloscope, yeah. like, oh, what is going wrong? But then when it's like software, you're like, oh, like, okay. It's not like that bad. as bad, yeah. It's like more manageable, I feel, because it's like so high level, you know? Like True. a lot of the issues have been taken out and you only have to work in this space. Like a certain scope or something. Okay. Yeah. So like for software, like the issues that I found, they were typically just like program bugs. Ah. And a lot of the times like program bugs would occur because like people don't comment their code properly mm. and you don't know what's going on. So then you don't actually know what's wrong with your code. So it's just like, Things like that. Like the, there's definitely like problems in both software and hardware, and there's challenges in working in both of them. But they're just very different challenges from each other. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to ask, like you're saying, hardware or electrical engineering is pretty difficult, and I agree. I don't think it's easy. Do you ever have second thoughts or doubts about your major, or do you ever just sit there one day and be like, I really should have studied this or majored in that? Um. Yeah. Sometimes for sure, because I'm just like I hate my life. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm so sick still. Okay, it's fine. Um, yeah, sometimes just, uh, I, I know like my dad like really wanted me to do CS. Really? Yeah, because he was just like, engineering's too hard, like you don't need to deal with all this. But like every single time I question it, I'm just like, no, I've learned so many things from True. it. So like, I don't like regret it at all. Sometimes I definitely like question it, you know, okay. like when it's really hard, like why did I choose this? Why did I you know like cs would have been easier or something but with ee i'm really glad that i did it because like i've like learned i've just learned so much just like i know like how a whole product works it's not like i know like one part of it true i like understand the whole thing and i think that's really valuable too like from a systems point so like a lot of the things that i'm looking at right now i don't want to just be like a software dev or like a hardware development person i want to do like more systems work Mm. so that's really designing a system okay Mm -hmm. like the integration the testing all like that whole part of it's the so bigger cool picture as well yeah. right? not just like the small details mm-hmm. i think that's so really like, important. i really like the big picture like, that's what like i like now that's nice. so like i'm really glad i did ee i think that's a great so. choice because a lot of people especially when they're trying to decide on what should i do or what major am i in i think that's a great way to put it like am i the type of person who's interested on in being really really good about one type of the like the product or do I want to be comfortable working on the different aspects or the different teams or the bigger picture or the smaller picture? I think these questions, when you ask them, they might help you narrow down or decide on the major that you want to go into. Yeah. And so that's like yeah. why like EE was good too, because it's not like, it's not like specialized, like to like CS or Compi. So like, even though I chose EE and I knew what I wanted to do more or less, I could still figure out like how to go about doing it. Like I think choosing EE figured, like helped me figure out like how I want to like go about I my see. career basically. And and again, like she's not an like a regular electrical engineer because she's taken a lot of computer engineering courses that were optional for her. Yeah. So I think that's really what gives her like like leverage over other electrical engineers because maybe those people are a little bit less flexible because mm-hmm. they don't have that programming aspect to it or yeah. that understanding of you know the the a deeper level of like the software things like that basically. So I definitely think that gives her an advantage over other people. Um, so let's talk a little bit about last year. Uh, and you mentioned like it was specifically, or like it was harder on a different level. Would you say it was the courses or like was it personal things? If, if you don't want to go into that, that's perfectly fine. But what would you say made that year like different from 
all the other years? Um, last year was just like rough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd say it was definitely the classes were a lot harder, you know, like what I have done every single semester is take like 17 to 18 credits. Mm. And like taking 17 to 18 credits of like all technical courses is fine. But then once you're taking that for like all 300 level courses, um. it's a whole different like game. Because, like, each class just requires so much more time. So it's just very frustrating with, like, how much time I'd have to spend for each class. And then, like, at the end of the day, I'd have, like, one or two hours to myself. So wow. that was just, like, it was just, like, really sucky in terms of, you know, like, my life literally became school. Wow. But also, like, I don't know, there was, like, a lot of, like, personal things going on, you know. Because, like, each year I feel like what happens, like, as we get older is, like, the highs get higher, but the lows get so much lower. Mm. And so, like, I was just, like, dealing with those things and, like, trying to figure out how to handle that on top of school mm. and then being able to be, like, okay, so, like, the way I handle this, I have to handle it properly, you know? Like, you can't let it get to you. Because, like, this, like, the thing about life is that regardless of what's going on in your personal life, you have to have your shit figured out yeah. on the other side. Yeah, so it's, like, on. when, like, my friend died, I was, like crying and then just like reading crying and reading it was like nice. it didn't matter like whether or not your friend died because like your homework is still due mm. you know and like at purdue it doesn't matter like they don't care if your friend died like it has to be like a direct family member yeah. even if it's a direct family member it's like you get three days of wow. like here you go you can cry and so it's just like those kind of things right yeah so being able to like manage your time was something that i like really figured out junior year because it's like Ultimately, you have to have something that you do for yourself at the end of the day. Otherwise, like, you're going to be really unhappy. Absolutely. And also, like, figuring, being able to, like, have time to figure out, like, your life things. Because, mm. like, you can't just, like, <coughs> let work or education just take over your life. True. Because you're going to be really unhappy, unhappy about and that. And we're all human beings, right? We're not, like, robots. We can't just keep yeah. working all the time. It's got to mm -hmm. take some time and do whatever it is that just makes you feel better or takes your mind off of the different things yeah. and so when like I don't want to stress too much about this but like during your lows what would you say some of the things that you did like like let's say talking to other people um, was one thing that helped you out what was something else that you said kind of helped you you know slowly get out of it for anyone who's going through a similar period of time um so like for one like yeah talking to people like my roommate I love her to death like she's always there for me and then yeah like caps was a big thing but caps like all those like caps definitely came after like i kind of had a hold on the situation oh like, okay yeah because like so. you have to figure out how you're actually going to like talk to a person about your issues you know you got to identify the issue first right yeah because mm -hmm. you only have like an hour to like talk to that person you're not going to figure out all your shit in, in that one time. hour yeah yeah so like for me like what i do is like whenever like i have like a lot of thoughts in my head a lot of feelings i just like write everything down so okay. like I literally That's like cry and just write everything right, down but it helps a lot because okay. then it's like I actually like know like I can document what's going on in my mind because okay. otherwise there's just like so many things going on and you just get lost and you're not even yeah. sure what it is is the actual issue that's actually interesting just like when you write it down it helps you even it visualize real. okay that's yeah, exactly instead of just like a thought not in your head okay nice yeah okay so is there anything else you'd like to or are these just the main things because I would say for example Maybe someone like me, you know, sports was an outlet, mm -hmm. but maybe because, you know, you were going through so much and you were on and off on these different activities, maybe it wasn't such an, an influencing factor for you. Yeah, like, I don't know, like, I'll go to, like, the gym and, mm -hmm. like, I'll definitely get my anger out, like, I'll take it out on my body, yeah. basically, and that helps, but, like, it when you don't have that much time, true. it's kind of hard. And it doesn't happen regularly, so it's yeah. not as effective as, you know, the quick solution of, okay, let me write down my problem and... Mm -hmm. and see what I'm going Cause through. Because like, the thing is, like, whenever you have, like, a problem, it's not just, like, affecting you at the end of the day. It's like you'll be, like, sitting in class and you'll be like, damn, I really want to cry right now. Mm. But you can't. You yeah. know, you have to focus on lecture. So it's like if you just, like, I don't know, like, take a quick moment to, like, kind of distract yourself from that, like, it helps. But also it's just, like, it's really, like, being able to just, like, manage your own feelings and, like, separating it too. I see. Yeah. I don't know, like... And I think, like, always, like, talking, not talking to my parents, because that doesn't actually help that much, mm -hmm. um, but, like, kind of thinking about what they went through I helps see. me, because, like, 
I feel like my problems, they're obviously like big, or not that big, but like they they exist, right? Mm -hmm. They're real. But when I look at like what they went through and like how they managed to get a hold of themselves, it like I see. it's very like inspiring. Like my dad, like his oh. life story is like messed up. Really? Yeah, cause so like his junior year, his junior year was very difficult because that's the year his dad died. Ooh. Literally, like first semester, like first month of college his dad died and then like because he was in india like you know like the once like the male like family head dies it's like financially the family was screwed yeah and so and like his little sister was still like in high school and his mom needed taken care of so like he had a lot of pressure on him to not just like do his school but also like suddenly become like financially responsible for For the the whole family. family wow so like I look at that and then I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I can figure it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> so basically, you know, looking at others and saying, I'm not underestimating what I'm going through, mm-hmm. but like their problems were much bigger, and then you're just using them as like an inspiration. Yeah, to, you yeah. Because it's like I don't think anyone should undervalue their problems. Absolutely. Because everyone's problems like are yeah. real and like absolutely. They're like their problems to themselves, like whatever is biggest to them at that point. But everyone goes through stuff. And, like, if someone can, like, manage to, like, get a hold of themselves, even at their lowest point, I think, like, you should also have the belief that you can do it, too. Absolutely. And I think that's a great way to go about it. Just find a role model or an idol or or even, like, it doesn't have to be for life in general. Maybe for, like, a a situation or, like, yeah, I I guess just find a role model for something. You know, like, I I think for you, maybe the role model is your dad with obstacles. Mm -hmm. But maybe, for example, career-wise, you'd, you'd have, like, a CEO of a company as a role model for, you know, how you want your career to be. I don't know. But, like, just basically having that person and, like, looking at his story and just getting is inspired and getting that strength, the inner strength yeah. to keep going. I think that's a great tactic to have. Mm-hmm. And so the next point I want to talk about is you, tu- you tutored some students for five months, roughly, right? Yeah. And I just want you to tell me about some of the common themes that you saw, like, how were these people struggling in general? What, like, I'm sure what they needed tutoring, not because they weren't smart enough, because end of the day, they're college students at Purdue. Mm-hmm. And we, we know for a fact, like, they have to be at a certain level to be here. But what were some of the common themes that you saw that contributed to their struggles? And then how did you help them, like, get out of it as um, much as possible? Well, I think a lot of them were going through, like, school troubles. Really? Like, a lot of them had, like trouble understanding like concepts mm. and i don't think like that's anything that it's About their fault them, yeah it's generally that i think like professors like all have different ways of teaching and professors all like they're also different at purdue you know like for 301 you can like fail 301 <laughs> one semester and then the next semester you'll Ace get it. an a plus yeah. like a plus in it and like that's it like it's semester, hard yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so I think it really depends on the professor. So, like, what I did as a tutor, like, I basically made sure that they understood conceptually what was going on. Mm, okay. So, like, for 301, for example, like, you know, why are we using Fourier transforms? Like, why are we trying to analyze something on a frequency spectrum? Mm. Actually understanding that, and then, because it's like, once you get that, and you basically get, like, the math going on behind it, like, problems are way easier to approach. Okay. So it's like a lot of them were just having problems, like like how do I do this problem you know like how Mm. do I actually like figure this out on the exam and a lot of times it's like literally they don't know what's going on on like a basic fundamental level and it's not their fault at all yeah and so what you basically you'd rather just take a step back and be like this is why we need to solve the problem and help them understand why and then you go into the how and like the step by step or like Mm -hmm. use this formula and that formula yeah mine's like the my process is basically like why how and what like that's what i realized that's how i like think nice and i think that's pretty structured and then again some people might like especially some professors might want to teach it this way but not necessarily convey it that way because Mm -hmm. especially at big schools like this when you don't necessarily have the same professor teaching the same class or even worse when you have just one professor teaching the class and he's just not i want to say his style doesn't really suit the majority of the students yeah and there's really nothing that um, people can do about this because you know the university just assigns them to this course mm-hmm. or the department assigns them to this and course. Like and a lot of times, like the professors don't even want to teach the class. Like mm. you know, De Carlo, <laughs> he didn't want to teach two hundred two. And like mm. a lot of these professors, they are actually like so much smarter than like needing to like teach mm. a two hundred or three hundred level course. So for them, like they think it's so easy. Yeah. But for us, just learning it, yeah. we're like, what? <laughs> and you think like they tend to skip over like some details. To them, it might be like intuitive, and then for yeah. us, it's like, wait, where'd you? 
would you even get that from? Exactly. So I mean, like I read the book a lot. Like really, I read like my like textbooks a lot because like a lot of times they don't cover things in lecture, and I don't always pay attention in lecture. So like okay. going back and reading the book, even if it's just like glancing over, it's like helpful. Wow. Okay, because yeah. that's that, this is the first time it gets mentioned by a guest. I personally don't refer really? to the textbook. I always do textbooks. But <laughs> I, I mean, I think this could be something for anyone who feels like I'm not getting a grasp of my courses or like a lot of the concepts in this class are just not getting to me. Maybe the textbook yeah. could be the solution. Because I refer to the textbook a lot like while, while I would be tutoring, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. I'd be like, look at this, like they like wrote this or like this graph describes this. Okay. And then you'd be like, oh, and it's like, yeah. And once they visualize <laughs> it, it helps them be like, this makes sense now. Uh-huh. And there's examples in the books mm. too. So oh, well, the professor helpful. maybe can cover one or two, and then the book is just... Like, and you can take as much time as you need to go through Should it. No rush. Like, that's, like, a big thing that I, like, picked up when I went from, like, my first semester to my second semester. So, first oh. semester, I got, like, a 2-7, okay? And then my second semester, I got a 4-0. Wow. And that's only because I finally figured out how to how study. To study. Mm, yeah. Big, big, big thing to notice. And I guess for, for Ramita, for example, it was, you know, I just need to spend a little more time with the book. And then other people, for example, that we have these lectures that are recorded. Boilercast, you can basically just re-watch the lecture online, and then maybe that works for some people. But basically, I think what you did was the fact that you took a step back and said, I think it's an issue with how I study. Yeah. And I think that, again, you know, I, I like your style of, you know, you take steps back and just be like, what is really the problem? Mm-hmm. Because you can just say, oh, I mean, the, co- the courses were hard, whatever. Yeah. But you realize, but like, like... No course is, like, that hard. You can figure it out. Exactly. You know, someone's teaching it, so you can, like, learn it. <laughs> and it's about making that decision really early on, because the 4.0 didn't happen in the last week or two, right? It was, like, no, the whole semester. No, a lot of yeah. work. So <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where you just need to really, like... You have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. You know, not doing well in your first semester in college can be really demoralizing, mm-hmm. and you can, like, take it out on yourself, or you can just be like, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's, like, your first semester. I was like, yeah. do I even belong here? Yeah, you have a lot of questions yeah. about, d- is this the right place, right major, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just make sure that you're honest with yourself. You confront the problems as soon as you can. Don't wait for them to develop and, like, become even worse and more complicated because it's just Yeah, because, like, harder. I know a lot of my friends, like, they didn't figure out studying until, like, <laughs> junior year. Because, yeah. you know, like, if, say, like, and I think a good thing was that I actually came into honors at Purdue. Really? Because, like, even though it sucked my first semester and it was so difficult, like, I figured out how to study within my, like, first to second semester. Mm -hmm. But say I had, like, been not in honors and then, like, gotten, like, smacked by ECE, like, my second semester of, like, sophomore year when it it ramps up, you know? Then I would have had trouble there. True. And I feel like I would have had more of a struggle figuring out what I was doing wrong at that point. Yeah, exactly. Because now there's much more, th- like, going on and, mm-hmm. like, more c- credits and more difficulty. And yeah, and you've already, like, you're already kind of, like, in a structure at school. Like, you don't really want to change it. Because, like, no one really wants to change their way of doing yeah, things. Exactly. Everyone likes to, like, have, they like, They think yeah. it's already perfect, right? No one wants to, like, change it and, like, be like, oh, I need to tweak this and that and, like, find their balance mm. again. The thing is, like, you always have to do that to wow. actually, like, stay on top of your Absolutely. game. And, like, so I think that's, like, the biggest struggle, like, actually realizing that, like, yeah, life's just always changing. That balance that you think you have is always changing, yeah, too. You have to adapt, basically, to the changes over time. Yeah, it's constantly adapting to everything. I think that's <laughs> a great piece of advice. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. We're almost out of time. So if you had a few things to say to your freshman self, just to have a, either a better college experience or a better job search experience, what would they be? Or even both. Um, I'd probably be, be to be like, chill out, like okay. chill out a little. <laughs> Take a deep all. breath. Yeah. Like just like in terms of like how many classes I took each semester, I did not need to take that like many. 17 to 18 credits and then do research on top of that. Oof. Like I did research basically every semester here. Wow. I didn't need to do that. Like I really didn't. I don't regret it in any way. Yeah. But like I definitely overworked myself a really? lot. Yeah. Because it's, like, now, like, I'm done with school. Like, I, c- I only have, you know, my a senior design left, yeah. and my one ECE class. And okay. then after that, I still have a semester left. Wow. So it's, like, I really didn't need to, like, True. do that many classes. Absolutely. But now I think it's good in a way because, like, whatever, like, club I'm doing right now, like, the, the organization I'm founding, I can put in a lot of time into that. Mm. So it's, like, all good in a way. Like, I True. wouldn't, like, say I regret any decision I made. Because, like, I'm happy with where I am now. Okay. So and what about, like, something maybe 
a piece of advice in terms of someone who goes through something emotionally or like non-academic related what would the first thing be in like on top of your head emotionally yeah i'd say really like don't take it out on yourself okay that's the biggest thing because i think a lot of times we like beat ourselves up for feeling a certain mm. way and i don't think that's right you know like the whole thing of like it's not it's like okay to be not okay i think that's like something we all like really need to figure like accept true like i think you know like with like my friend's suicide like mm. analyzing that constantly like feeling guilty about like what i could have done there was like a lot of emotions that went behind that and there's been like things like that before too but that was like the biggest thing this year mm. and a lot of guilt came out of that really and just like you know like why am i feeling this way mm. like why did this happen et cetera, et cetera. but i think like the first thing that comes like that anyone should do is be like yeah it's okay for me to not feel okay and i should take time to figure like my emotions out because i think like something that we all do is like when something like this happens we just like try and like move on and be like yeah mm -hmm. i have like this to do like i have this in my life but like you honestly need confront, we, yeah, your we need to like confront our problems because mm -hmm. if you don't confront your problems it's not they're gonna, gonna go again. away yeah, they're like gonna. they're gonna manifest in some other way you know True. like you're gonna like be unhappy in this way some part of your life isn't gonna work out the way you want and like by the time you may figure that out it might be like not necessarily too late but you'll be like oh wow like i could have figured this out before if i had just like been honest with myself true true and then finally so in terms of just job search or getting a job number one thing that just comes to mind like in terms of piece of advice i think being yourself and just going after it okay. like 100 percent, just like go after it like don't even care like if you don't get it big deal you don't get it move on just like because i think failure is like the most important thing absolutely. we can learn from absolutely because like the more you fail the more like you're like n the more you're gonna learn you know because like if you fail a bunch of times you're gonna get something at one True. point you know and, and, and really <laughs> failing is like learning right yeah because it's just an experience that didn't go the way you wanted it to be and then you just mm -hmm. learned a new lesson in life right? yeah and maybe it's like you know it's <coughs> like good that you didn't get it because you're gonna get something that you like actually really enjoy True. Or it's gonna work out better for you I so agree. it's like just because you didn't get what you wanted that doesn't mean like your whole world is in shambles like it's okay i agree <laughs> i agree well unfortunately that's all the time we have i want to thank you so much for being here it was a pleasure having you if someone wants to contact you or reach out to you for you know either you know advice on getting a job how to study or any of anything that we mentioned today what's the best thing or what's the most practical thing for you to do you want me to leave like your linkedin in the description or would you rather some other medium um what would you prefer in general I'd say mm, probably LinkedIn. Okay. I'm not the best at like communicating when it comes to text messaging. That's <laughs> fine. I mean, but as long as like if, if someone really just maybe they relate to what you've said or they're going through something similar, would you th would you say maybe LinkedIn is fine for you? Yeah, LinkedIn's okay. fine or like any of my social media. Honestly. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'll just honestly I'll just share like her accounts and then if you have um, something you know maybe you, you related to something with her you think she might be able to help you solve a problem or go through something I think she'd be more than happy to go through it and I also want to encourage everyone if you have something you'd like to share please do what she did and reach out to me I'd be more than happy to have you over uh, but with that being said thank you all for watching and we'll see you some other day take care